Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff with Max Stadium coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Plex and we're going to take a look more specifically at how do you update Plex and I want to walk you through all of the different settings uh, that you can configure to make Plex uh, your own, really, uh, to customize it to the way that you want it. Now one of the things I wanted to show you is, let me just pull up a finder window here, is if you remember before I had set up my media folder and we had imported all of this, but you notice that Planet Earth didn't show up uh, inside Plex. Let me just uh, move this over here. Uh, you'll notice if I come in here and go to uh, TV shows, uh, it's not there at all. And I wanted to show you this uh, because I wanted you to see that if you don't set the folder structure upright, it won't notice that that's in here because it knows this is a TV show folder, but it's confused because it doesn't have the folder structure. So if I just come in here and uh, actually add Planet Earth as a series here, and put that folder there. And then if I just put uh, this inside the folder, now I'm not even going to change the name, okay? Because I'm going I'm to allow uh, Plex to try to figure that out. And so let me, so now that I've done that, let me just pop this down. We're going to go inside uh, TV shows here. And then come over here and just refresh. And you'll notice right away now it's found Planet Earth. It's pulled down the data. You can see down here it's finished the process. And if I even drill into it, uh, you can see that it's even uh, just sort of defaulted it to episode one and pulled up the proper uh, information. I just wanted to show you that because I wanted you to see that, uh, you know, how you set this up is important. And so I just wanted to, to walk you through that. Now, what I want to do is let's talk about how we uh, update metadata. So let's just assume for a second that Plex didn't pull everything that I wanted to have pulled uh, on this. Let's say it didn't make the right match. And so I want to edit that information. Uh, you'll notice on the side I've got a toolbar here uh, that allows me to do several things. Uh, the first thing up here is to edit, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. Uh, I can also refresh on here so that I'll refresh uh, Plex's search so it'll update its uh, information. Here I've got a mark as watched or not, and so I can mark it as watched. And It says, are you sure you want to mark these episodes as watched? I'll say yes. And as you do that, you notice the one has disappeared now uh, because it's showing that we've watched it. Uh, so that's one way I can do that, and you see it's solid. If I want to just uh, put it back to unwatched, I just do the same thing here, and now I've got the one there showing me that I haven't watched it. Uh, I've also got here, uh, I can fix uh, an incorrect match, and so if I just uh, click on that, uh, it'll say, you know, uh, select the show that needs to be uh, corrected, and I'll do that, and now it's going to reprocess it, which it did, and it comes back again with the same information, again, because it was right in the first place. Uh, but if I had changed something and I wanted to fix a match that wasn't right, I'd go through that process. All right, so let me just show you that again if I tap on that. Now, I can also say, uh, you know, match using, and I can choose the actual uh, service that I want to have matched. In this case, there's only one that's in here. Uh, I can also do a custom search if I want. And so I can come in here then and change uh, the year, uh, the actual name of the show, uh, or movie if I'm looking at that. I can also do, you know, based on my personal media shows so that it uses my naming instead of doing the search. Uh, again, I can even change the language and all of that. So I do have uh, the option to kind of make this customized if I want. Let me just cancel that. And then down here, I can actually unmatch it. And when I unmatch it, what that's going to do is, is basically uh, take it out of being a match, allow me to change some things, and then start over, and then I can sort of refresh it and have it go and do its search again. Okay, so that's kind of a, a tour of these things on the side. Now, I can edit this at any time just by clicking the pencil and clicking Edit. And so you see I've got all of this information here uh, that I can edit, and this is all of the metadata that Plex has pulled down. So you can see the name, I can uh, add a short, uh, sort title, all this information. Uh, you also notice here I've got the movie poster. Now I can, I can actually click Change Poster, and what it'll do is it will actually show me other posters that uh, it has found uh, that I might want to use instead. You know, maybe I like the, uh, the tiger better, or uh, maybe I like, you know, this one better. And so all I've got to do is just uh, click on these, and it'll change it for me. Or if I've got my own uh, cover art that I want to put on there, I can just actually choose an image right from my, uh, my computer and put that in there, or enter a URL where the image is if I want to do it that way. So there are options for me to be able to change this to really customize it to the way that I want it to look. Uh, let me just uh, get rid of that. I can also change the banner if I want to do that. And so if I uh, just click on that, this is the banner that will show up for the TV shows. And so, and this banner uh, is really what shows up uh, on the Plex client 
uh, that I'll show you that you use on the Mac or that you might use on a television. But I can change what that looks like just right in here and pick the one that I want. Or like I said before, choose an image or a URL. I'm just going to leave it alone for right now. And then the background. You notice it's pulled this background over here. I can actually change that background image to whatever I want it to be. So maybe instead of, uh, you know, the kind of subdued earth in the background, maybe I want it to be, uh, you know, look more like this right here. And so I'll just uh, click on that. And you notice now it's changed it so that it looks like the one that I selected. So there's a lot that I can do uh, just to customize uh, the look and feel of it. Uh, again, I can, uh, I can come in here and add, uh, you know, genres if I want to. So I can add drama to it and uh, then just uh, you know close the lock there and now everything is uh, set uh, I can add it to a collection if it's a collection I can come in here and change this uh, so it does uh, give me uh, options to customize it so that if you have any of your metadata that it didn't pull right or you don't uh, you don't want to view it that way you want to change it you can come in here and make that change and uh, it'll take effect and it'll be permanent all you've got to do is click the lock to finish it up so that kind of gives you an idea on how to do that. And if I just uh, if I just go back, let me just drill all the way out out of here for a minute. Uh, the same is true in my movies as well. If I come into my movies, I can I can go in and edit the metadata in here as well, and change whatever I want uh, on the side. Now you'll notice a couple other things here. Uh, I can do an analyze on this as well if I want to. If I just uh, click on analyze, it will go ahead and analyze uh, the information there. Uh, I can also uh, download uh, this movie if I want to do that. So right when you're in the very specific item, you can actually download um, the, the movie down to your desktop. And then I've also got a media info on here as well. Let me just click on that. And this gives you all of the information about the media you have. Uh, so all the technical information about bandwidth and, and uh, all the settings, you know, 480p and all of that. And then uh, file information as well. Uh, kind of where it's located on my computer, um, the different streaming stuff, the codec that I uh, use to uh, encode it, uh, what the audio is. So it, it really does include a lot of information just in case I want that information later. And I can even view, it, uh, view the XML of it as well uh, to see the media information in XML. So I'm just going to get rid of that. But you can see that I have, uh, you know, I have just some other extra options on here once you're dr drilled down to a specific movie. Uh, the same is true on a TV show. If I drilled down to the specific television show, I'd get these other options in here as well uh, to be able to make some of those uh, some of those changes. So let me just uh, click the back arrow here and go back to the top. Um, one more thing I can do, um, as a matter of fact, let me just go back into movies. Uh, I do have this uh, options menu right here that slides out. And what's really nice about this is I can actually uh, view my movies uh, by recently released, recently added or viewed, what's on deck. I can filter them by genre or year or content, uh, studio. I mean, I've got all of these options. And that's why I say it's great to just kind of lump all of your movies in one spot and your television shows and, and keep your uh, top level structure simple because then you have access to all of these things that really uh, allows you to customize it. I can also view my movies if I want by uh, the details and so that gives me another view that gives me just more information uh, kind of brings up some of that metadata to the front instead of just the movie poster uh, I can also just view them in a list and just see a, a list So if you've got a lot of movies and things sometimes this is a lot quicker uh, way to view that information and I can sort it that way and then I can also view it by folder and so by the folder that they're in again this is in the movies folder so it's already there I already know that so let's just go back here uh, to poster. So it gives me that nice slide out drawer. Let me just slide that drawer back in so that we don't have that there uh, anymore. Uh, let me just go back here for a minute. Uh, I also have uh, other options over here. Uh, I can um, you know, do, a, do a, a turbo scan or a deep scan if I'm having problems pulling up the uh, information for my movies. Uh, or my TV shows or any of my media. I can do these scans if I want to. I can also edit uh, movies from this side if I want to do that. And so when I click this, I can actually change the folder or add a folder. You know, if I've got more than one folder, I can add a folder on here as well uh, to add more media. Uh, and then you can see over here, I've got the more area. I can empty trash. I can force uh, a refresh, so it refreshes everything. Uh, I've got an analyze, which analyzes all of the files in there in my uh, media uh, library section. And uh, just make sure it, it, it sets it up to play it back at optimal. Uh, and then I can also delete too. I can delete this entire library just by uh, clicking that. So I'm just going to click off that because I don't want to uh, make any changes. And then obviously if I hover over the movie, I can edit it, refresh it, or play it right from here as well. Uh, let me just uh, go back. 
Now, you'll also notice here I've got this uh, select items. I can uh, tap this to select uh, certain items if I want to do some batch changes. You'll notice here that uh, it adds a few things for me. I can actually add them to a collection. So if I've got, uh, you know, a series of movies, let's say I've got the Lord of the Rings trilogy, right? I've got three movies and I want to add them to a collection. I can create a collection, select the three Lord of the Rings movies, and then just add them to a collection. And what that'll do is stack them up so that it'll show a top-level uh, movie uh, that says Lord of the Rings trilogy. And then when I dig into it, it'll have the three movies in there and kind of set it up like we have set up with TV shows. So you can do that with your movies as well. Uh, I can mark uh, multiple ones as watched or not or as unwatched. And then I can also merge uh, movies together as well. So again, if I've got, you know, maybe a Star Wars and then I've got the commentary disc or something like that, I can merge those together into one uh, so that they're uh, on the same area there. All right, so let me just uh, get rid of these checkboxes. And you can see it moves everything kind of back to where it was. So that gives you an idea of how you can uh, edit the media that you've got uh, in your area right here. And uh, kind of gives you a little bit of a walk through there. Uh, you can also do some edits out here as well. Again, I can add more media. Uh, also, I can, you know, do the same thing, optimize or clean bundles. Uh, you know, it stores information. If I need to, you know, clean that out because something's not right, I can do that as well. And then again, like I said, you've got the refresh here where I can do the turbo or deep scan. And so that's true of all these, uh, all these different areas. Uh, down here under the uh, channels area, I can select view all. Uh, which will basically let me view all of the different channels that I have there. All right, so that kind of gives you a walkthrough of the settings. Now, a couple more things. If you come up to the top up here, uh, you'll notice that uh, on our on our account here, uh, I've got I've got friends and recommendations in a queue. Uh, so I can add friends uh, who also have Plex that can uh, join me, and we can share recommendations uh, with one another, and we can also queue some shows up. Uh, I'll show you what that sharing looks like when I cover the MyPlex area, but just wanted you to know that that was there. Uh, so let me just click this back area arrow. Uh, I've also got activity up here where uh, I can see all the different activity I've done when I've loaded uh, the information, how it's scanned it, where it's put it. In case I need to go back and just kind of get a feel for uh, when I did something or if something goes wrong, it's a quick way to troubleshoot. And then I've got the settings. And so let me just cover the settings area for you. Uh, I've got two things that I can set settings on. The Plex Media Server itself, which is running on your Mac Mini right now if you've installed it, and then the Plex Web Interface. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, click the Show Advanced Settings so that we're always seeing the advanced settings, uh, just so you see everything. Uh, here on the Media Center, you've got the General tab where you can change the name to whatever you want your server to be. Uh, you can choose to send anonymous information to Plex. If you want an icon in your dock, uh, you can click that. It uh, just gives you a few things about debugging and all of that on here that you can change. Uh, we've also got MyPlex, which uh, again, we sh showed that before, how you sign up for your MyPlex uh, account. And so uh, we talked about that last time. Now here you've got your agents, and the agents are basically um, the uh, engines that look for the metadata for your different uh, items, whether it's movies, TV shows, artist albums, photos, that sort of thing. And so you have under each one, you've got uh, what process, okay, which agent you want to use to find the information. So for personal media like home movies and things like that, you probably don't want to use uh, you know, you're not going to use any online uh, information. You probably just want to use whatever the personal media is there and maybe any other local assets that you might have just in case. And you can order these in terms of the order that you want them uh, to show up. Uh, you can actually, um, you know, do that. Um, but anyway, so, so that shows that. Uh, I also can look for movies uh, freebase, which is another database. And so I can choose what I want to look for on here. Uh, so what information and then also the movie database. And so those are the different uh, search options. So I've got that for TV shows, right? I've got it for the artist as well, uh, albums, and then even on uh, photos, uh, where it's just going to be photos by itself. Uh, but that just kind of shows you that the, those are how you set up the agents that will look for the information that you've got and pull down that metadata. Then I've got my library uh, where I can set some settings here. Again, this is a good one. Update my library automatically. And that's something that uh, if you don't want to hit the refresh button, you just want it to update as you're adding things, you want to check that box there and it'll do it all on its own. Uh, you can also have it run a partial scan when changes are detected uh, so that uh, it's only going to scan the uh, folder uh, when that, that changed. And so that's what I'd like to do as well. Uh, and then you can say update my library periodically, and then you can just, just decide what interval you want that to update on. Every few hours, daily, whatever that is. 
Uh, again, empty trash. You can include mu music sections in your automatic updates. Uh, you can also allow clients to delete information from your library if you want to do that. And so again, just kind of gives you some information there. Again, I'm showing you all the advanced settings. If I just clicked hide, you can see it really simplifies it, but I'm kind of showing you all the extras that are in there uh, as, we, as we go through this. Uh, channels. So you can enable the different channels and you can even tell it what uh, XML path you want it to use for Aperture, iPhoto, iTunes, uh, all of that information. You can see there you've got uh, the option to kind of uh, update those. Again, if I hide the advanced settings, you'll see it's real simple with just checkboxes. Makes it a little easier to look at. Uh, on the network side, you can just uh, enable GDM or not. Uh, pretty much that's what you got there. You got an AppCast URL if you want to do that. Again, it's not something that you'll necessarily use. Uh, you know, if you've got IPv6, uh, which you don't have to worry about, uh, you could come in here and make those changes, but that won't really affect you. Uh, you got your transcoder uh, information here, whether you want to have higher bit rates over 3G connections or not, you know, if you want to save data. And you can actually select the quality, whether you want a higher speed encoding uh, or higher quality or make your CPU hurt, uh, which basically just means it's going to, you know, really work to encode it well. Uh, so it's up to you which one you want to select. Uh, again, under the advanced settings, you can add all kinds of, of other information about the DTS audio, Apple TV, all of that. Uh, so again, that's probably not anything you have to worry about. This is probably fine. Uh, languages, again, if you've got other languages or subtitles, you want to uh, select what those are. You can have them preset or manually set. And then finally, there's just DNLA, uh, DLNA, uh, which is basically for different devices that pull, you know, PMS server stuff like uh, uh, PlayStation 3 or 4, you know, uh, that, that sort of information, some televisions as well. So now let's take a look at the Plex website. So you know what you can uh, kind of customize over there. Uh, here's the general information. Now this is uh, some inf great information here. Uh, you can play theme music if you want in the background when it's available. And this is one that uh, if you don't mind uh, having the music, it's kind of neat. When you check this uh, box, it will actually go and find the theme music for, let's say, the TV show that you're watching. And it'll play that uh, theme music in the background on a loop and just keep playing it. So it kind of adds another dimension to what it pulls down. That's what makes Plex so great is that it uh, thinks of all of these little details. Uh, and then you can say show movie uh, unwatched icons uh, in the movie lists. If you want to have them show you know, whether they're unwatched or not, you can, you can click that. Uh, and then enable to keyboard shortcuts. Again, if I go to advanced, uh, there's not a lot of extra on there. Dashboard uh, on here. Now the dashboard uh, allows you to sort of move uh, your different channels and things around. Uh, allows you to delete some things or hide some things or expand it. Uh, you have to have a Plex Pass subscription to do this, and that's kind of their paid uh, subscription. And I'm going to cover that in another screencast, but uh, that's where you get access to this. That's one of the features you get by having the Plex Pass. Uh, you've got search, where you can set up whether you want to search remote libraries or search the channels, and uh, that kind of information shows up there. Uh, you've also got the player here, and so you can pick the streaming quality, uh, what the local quality is, and the remote quality. And so, again, 720, 1080, whatever it is that you want. Uh, again, since you're on, um, you know, a hosted Mac Mini, uh, the remote quality is what you're worried about. And so, uh, you, depending on your bandwidth, you might want to keep that low. Uh, again, direct play, direct stream, uh, or always use the highest resolution. Uh, again, that takes it kind of um, out of the bandwidth realm and just says I'm going to push it through no matter what. Uh, so it's probably good to leave that one unchecked because we're looking at a remote setup. And then finally, you've got Sync, which again only works with Plex Pass. And the great part about Sync is that you can actually sync your different uh, movies to your devices so that if you're offline, uh, you can still view that media. And with a remote uh, Mac Mini server, this would really come in handy. And, uh, you know, just in case you're not online, you're offline uh, remotely. Uh, but again, that's part of the Plex Pass, uh, Pass subscription that we'll cover later. So that kind of covers the settings and gives you an idea of how that works. Let me just. Uh, Let's go back home here and start at the top level. So that gives you an overview of all of the different settings and things that you can customize with Inplex. Again, you can change the metadata to whatever you want. You can add uh, more content. Uh, you can uh, even tweak some of the settings in the background. But that kind of covers the whole gamut of what you can do uh, in customizing Plex. I'll be back with another screencast to show you how to access this remotely uh, from your various devices as well. And we'll probably cover uh, Plex Pass and uh, that, that kind of information as well. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac in a hosted environment.